It's almost hard to describe what Antarctica is like. It's kind of this otherworldly place, which is very difficult to kind of describe to people who haven't been there. It's absolutely spectacular. There are icebergs, shades of pastel blues and kind of whites. It's almost silent sometimes, so you can just hear the sounds of the wind in your ears whistling past, icebergs gurgling as they drift past in the current. But otherwise, the weather can suddenly shift to these sort of very extreme, raging storms that can batter your tents and your ships that you're working in. And it's probably one of the most spectacular places on Earth. It's called Deception Island because it's deceptive. The first boats, the, the sealers, when they visited, it looked like a sort of solid rock in the ocean. And as they uh, sailed around trying to find somewhere to drop anchor, they found this narrow opening. Uh, and sailing through the opening, they found this lovely harbour. We sat in this fantastic hut, um, which was on Deception Island, which is an ancient volcano that has now been inundated by the sea. And that is just offshore of the Antarctic Peninsula today. This is a replica um, from many decades ago where early explorers and scientists would have stayed to understand the very kind of basic science of Antarctica. It was built on the Antarctic Peninsula in 1956. It took the team 10 days to build it and it stood on the peninsula up until 1994 when it was moved piece by piece to the Falkland Islands Museum. So you go through the door stamp your boots, get rid of your snow, take your boots off possibly, um, go into the main part of the hut. So there's a tiny little kitchen that had a primer stove and a camp stove um, and tins of food, a lot of which were buried in the snow uh, or the ice that had condensed on the walls. They had then four bunks. If you go into the main part of the hut, there were four bunks and a bench in the corner, a table, and then some chairs so that the four of them could sit down. I guess the table was where they did their mapping or drew up the maps. Stepping inside the Deception Island hut is like travelling back in time. It's, a, it's an opportunity to step back to what it would be like to be an adventurer and a scientist in the 1950s. Um, everything you see inside brings back that world to life. We've got the coats that they wore, the skis that they skied in, the books that they read, the pictures of the people who were staying in there. You get a real sense of the challenges, the excitement, the opportunities, and um, the adventure that comes from being a scientist in the 1950s. There were four of them in a very small space. Reading one of the accounts, um, they said uh, they got on very well, didn't know how, but they got on well. Played lots of Scrabble um, and cards, uh, told stories. Stories work because if I can step into the skin of another person, if I can see through the eyes of another person, I can understand another life. The film and the installation take us to an extraordinary, haunted volcanic caldera in the Antarctic Ocean. What I want most of all is to transport people, to take them as much as is possible on a, 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 a journey of the imagination which calls on all the senses too. So hear it, smell it, feel it, be taken into the world. It would be amazing to think in some small way that people's eyes had been opened or seen something new or felt transformed a little bit by that experience. So Cambridge has two of the UK's leading or even the world's leading polar institutes. So we have the British Antarctic Survey and the Scott Polar Research Institute. These institutes lead really cutting-edge research which will help us to understand how climate change is affecting the polar regions today. The place where this hut was located, when it was built in the 1950s, the landscape is completely different today. The science that was done in the Antarctic in the mid-years of last century is, is the foundation of the climate science of today. It's about the human story, but it's also about the way we live on the planet now. It's about our respect for our environment, our love of the environment. Um, and I think by inviting people into somewhere like this and showing the human dimensions of a small space within the context of this planetary science, um, I think we can get people involved in a, a, in a very special way. It's an unbelievable opportunity to learn and to hear stories and to hear incredible stories of, of human beings surviving in, in quite wild and unexpected climates.